Did you get okay. All right. I think you live. Hey, boo. Yeah. Hey, can you? <laughs> <laughs> hey, it only took us 42 minutes to go live for the first time with all the technical difficulties and the setup. And I know right, you got to right. run out of here at 4 p.m. It's like 3.43 yeah. now, so we got about 17 minutes for my first podcast, Old School Sundays Conversations. I'm live here with my, my sister. Um, I affectionately yeah. call her Boo, <laughs> but this is Keisha Hudson. <laughs> Very bright, brilliant, excellent um, entrepreneur, um, insurance rep. She do a little bit of everything. Um and I think one of her monikers is always be making money, right? That's correct. <laughs> yeah, and you know that the good own. word says that money is a tool. So she she on the right track in my book. Um, so I, I wanted to to get her on today and have a conversation about insurance. Um, I have insurance. A lot of times we don't think about insurance until something go wrong. I just saw that blue cast pop up. And my baby girl, she got one on too. I didn't have one on my arm. <laughs> but when you um when you go through some, you start thinking about, hey, how can I um how can I protect myself when things uh go wrong? So boo, real quick, I know I, I said you was gonna sign me up publicly so people see the seriousness of it and also see what that process is. But real quick, I was trying to think of some questions I can ask you and let's Let's try to cover a history of it and why it's important. One of the reasons why I wanted to talk to you about it and talk within our communities, black communities, and some, some European communities as well, and other, other people communities, we don't see the severity of some, again, until some happens. Um, so somebody then got hurt, and then you see all the GoFundMe pages go up. And I, ha I heard a guy say something that, that sparked a nerve in me. We know we experienced the George Floyd that while we was going through this pandemic and we coming out the pandemic, but we still see a lot of African Americans being killed. And this guy said, um, Jumping Jack Tax, I'm gonna have to get him on here one day. I can't think of his name right now, but his company is Jumping Jack Tax. I'm gonna give him a shout out for this. He had a European guy on there and he said, you know what? If every African American had insurance of two, $200,000, the insurance companies would push to stop these killings they'll be about to go out of business the way that they've been mowing down African-American males and females. So I wanted you to speak to the history of insurance and then if you can, why why do you feel like it's important for you to have insurance? Uh, well, you know, for generations and generations, it has created instant wealth. So the thing is the knowledge about um life insurance and why it's important and why it should be treated just as if it's a car insurance payment or health insurance payment, because that's just how important it actually is. And we've learned over history that people have been programmed to believe that that's the last thing you should get. And the first thing you should get rid of, right? When bills are coming due, get rid of the life insurance and Take that money and use it for something else. Yet and still, if you was to pass away that same month of paying that bill, uh, you would have left your family an inheritance uh, to get out of debt, right? To be right. better. So instead, uh, we'll it, it doesn't it has to have a value for it, right? And it has to have an right. understanding of the value for it. So you have to understand the value of having. It's a reconditioning of thinking. So. You have to condition your mind or uh, have a mindset of this is my legacy, right? Okay. I don't care if it's a $20,000, a $10,000 policy, enough to bury you. And if you only leave your family, say, five or $5,000, right? Okay. Right. Now your burial is taken care of, but you done left them with some money to do something with, right? Right. So it's like uh, you have to have a true... Uh, it's a need and not just something that should be on the back burn. It shouldn't be something that should just be dropped quickly. Anything, drop the car insurance and keep the the life insurance. Because guess what? If you have an accident and you die in your car, guess what? You'll have insurance that's going to pay you out. 
Right. Car insurance is just for the car, the total of the car. It's not going to pay for your death. Right. Unless right. The other, somebody fall, but you go through all this and that and the other instead of having something that's in place. So I think um, a lot of people don't really think about uh, morbidity or uh, their mortality of, you know, I'm going to die one day. You know what I'm saying? Like we hear the saying, like you only come in this world once and you leave out of it once. But to actually right. Right. digest that into your everyday living, it's like, oh, wow. I really need this. It's not a gimmick. It's not a scam. It's something that's going to stop me from having to go go find me or beg in the state or and and just for instance, say you had a person who was getting help assistance from the state and uh, they had social security. So for instance, they were getting help from social services and they had um, social security payments. Okay, well that can be great. It might pay a portion, like a thousand dollars towards it, like say eight fifty from social services, two fifty five from social security. That's less than a thousand dollars, right? That you paying for to to you got to come up with the rest. So even if it's five thousand dollars, you still got to come up with four thousand. Even if you're doing a cremation and the cremation is twelve fifty, that means you totally broke. People don't think that you got to dress that person. You got to put, you know, have a wig or their hair done or whatever the case may be. And then do you want to cremate your loved ones or do you want to bury them, right? So all those are money situations that people don't think about right. until it happened. And now we're struggling, we're running, we're trying to figure out which way to go. So it's inherently the intent to change the mindset of our community and show the importance of having some type of protection over your life, right? You have I many people who say in uh say trailer parks right and grandma dad and grandma left them just ten thousand dollars right yet they was able to take that ten thousand dollars and put something down on a home for their family right so what was grandma doing grandma was setting up legacy unfortunately we in our urban communities and our so-called ghettos they don't teach that right but even in them trailer parks they teach that and they understand the importance of having something that's better than having nothing at all. So I think once we um, get into the set of I could spend $300 on some jeans and a shirt uh, that's um, I might wear once or twice at the most, then I should be able to spend at least $100 a month. That's three months that you got on your body for some life insurance. Right. It make a whole so, lot of sense. Let, let me ask you this. I heard you speaking of, um, you know, again, how um, people are not looking at the money or thinking about the money that they spent um, in thinking that insurance may be some type of scam. Um, I'm, I'm one that paid my insurance for my health care. Thank God I, I was doing that when I got into my little spiel and accident. But why have... And even with people with automobile um, coverages as well, why why have um, deductibles gone up? What do you what what is the 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 um the reason for that cost going up? And is that some somebody should be worried about? Or is that just moving with inflation? So I, I'm just trying to think in the mindset of a person like you said, think oh I can't be spending this kind of money. Why should they still appreciate? what insurance can do for them, even if they try to pull up an argument like, oh, I, I can't do this because deductibles are going up. Does that make sense in that I mean, question? I understand what you're saying, but honestly, that's a non-factor. Honestly, because we thinking about, you're thinking about a car, which is a material fact, but you mm -hmm. would put the car over your life? No, you shouldn't. But that's what I'm just saying in the beginning is the conditioning of how we were taught to think. Instead of mm. saying, well, you know what, since I know deductible going up, I need to get some more hours at work. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. right. Let, me put, let me put that extra $6 up a yes. month, $20 yes. a month. Or Maybe uh, I won't go get that cheeseburger this, this week. Yeah, right. I've been, buying, <laughs> I've been buying McDonald's every day, and I've been spending right. $10 a day on McDonald's, which is $50 a week, which is $200 a month. And we just saying out of right. five days out the week, right? That makes so sense. You can just get half of the time and take a hundred dollars again, right? Cut out the right. McDonald's every day, uh, for the for the month, and just go maybe a week out the month. And guess what you have? Probably have money for not only your life insurance, but also for that deductible you wasn't expecting to cut. Mm. So again, mm. 
it's right. a lot about um, budgeting and spending habits. We we aren't again. That's why I say it goes back again to how we were generationally not taught the importance and value of having something that would bring us instant wealth. Right. right, right. We have had blinders uh, put over our eyes. Even our parents didn't realize the value of it until something happened. Right. And not exactly. realizing that you didn't have to struggle with these bills because your wife or your husband passed away. Right. 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 Your husband and your wife, they left the family, the legacy right. in a good condition. Exactly. So it's a it's a state of mind to have a state of well-being and to we stress enough about things that we can't control. But something right. that we have the power to control, we don't want to think about what if. Oh, I'm not going to die. Ooh. Ain't not going to happen to me. I'm good. But we still, we rock star, we partying, we doing what we want to do until. Amen. Some, right. Hey. Grandma passed. Grandpa passed. What did they leave? Right. Right. Aunties passed. Uncles passed. Cousins passed. What did they leave and who did they leave it to? Now, we have some people who had that understanding, right? Who've been educated and, and don't still, instead of saying a person who don't understand it, the importance is ignorant, trying to educate them. Mm. Why is it important? Instead, it's more so of a mindset, oh, I got mine. Ha, ha, ha. You're going to figure out how to get yours one day. You're going to see right. why I got this stuff like it is. Instead of saying, you know, the reason I got my stuff like it is is because I know in the event something happens, I'm covering my family. What are you going to do to cover yours? You feel me? So that, that brings sense. a conversation of realness, of reality, of of putting real situations in the forefront. Right. Things that we don't want to think about. Or, you know, it might be a person who's talking about it to that person. They're just like, oh, I don't want to hear because I don't like that person. <laughs> you know what I mean? It just be some ignorant things that prevent people. Again, it's a state of mind. Prevent people from just getting it for themselves. And I always say, you know, um, you get to an age and what people don't understand either is you get to a certain age in your late forties or late thirties and fifties, the price of insurance, life insurance goes up, 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 up. Right. right. So if we taught, I'm going to put a policy, um, a, a simple $10,000 policy on my child and they five, but that policy will be a hundred thousand by the time they're 18. I'm not going to be paying all them premiums. Nothing happened to my kid. But look where you're putting your kid at when they're 18. That makes a lot right? of sense. That makes a lot of sense. You're paying a minimal amount. Say you pay $15, $20 a month for that $10,000. But you know when your kid, 13 years from now, they got hundred grand, And it's probably whole life. So that means if that kid going to college or want to do a business or something like that, they can pull some of that money out and use it. Okay. Now, see, you, you're talking about a whole nother aspect that I wanted to ask you about as well in regards to pulling money out of an insurance policy. I know your time is running short as well because you have some more meetings to get to. So um, one question I want to talk about with you talking about the ignorance that a lot of us have in regards to how insurances work. Even now, when it's time to get in contact with whoever you need to get in contact about your insurance policies, is there a, a certain... Um, guidebook or way that yeah. a person needs to make sure that that beneficiary or that loved one knows what the process is when it's time that they have passed away and they need to invoke that insurance policy. So, so yeah, instance, if something company, happens to, you know, saying a, a, a loved one and Hey, you need to do a, B, C and D or one, two, three. These are the moves that you need to make immediately so that we can take care of the business of the business. We done paid everything. But there's a lot of people who don't paid everything and still don't know. Well, I don't know where they left it at, or I, I don't right. know who to call. Uh, so that person, they got to name their beneficiaries, right? <clears throat> yeah. That person's policy, they got to name their beneficiaries. So that person that they name as their beneficiary, somebody should have access well, I think I'm losing to. Okay, hold on. Somebody should have access to uh, living okay, I see trust and will. So, like for instance. Some companies have what they call a safeguard legacy, which is basically okay. where it prepares that person. So this is what it does. Okay, I'm going to take those pages out. So it's called a legacy. It's free. 
It's a legacy safeguard. So what it does is the, the person receives a card. Okay. Right? Such as this. Like if you can see, they get a card. Well, you can't see the flyer that well. But what they do is it, it's like legacy planning. Leave a lasting legacy, right? So it says you get a planning guide software. You get the planning archive where you can store the information at. It helps you to plan your estate. Um, it helps you with the end of life guidance. So say you want to uh, do your um, your obituary, for instance, right? right. You, I want to wear a, a black suit, you know, and I want to have a blue handkerchief in it with a dab hat on with a blue feather in it, right? right? But down to the socks, you can leave that information. And then all okay. the information you put in that you're planning is placed on, you have a card, membership card with your number on it, and also a CD, right? With those two things, you tell them what you want to happen for you. You tell them how you want your assets to be um, distributed. And uh, you provide your family with things like support service for survivors, like grieving counseling. And right. so, um, if, if, so listen, you my beneficiary. I pass away. You got mm -hmm. this um, this legacy card. Is there a number mm -hmm. that you dial as soon as you heard that I passed away? Or how, how, does, yeah. that, how does it get invoked? How, how does that work? Uh, upon retrieval, I mean, the person who has that card upon retrieval of your uh, death certificate, they start oh, the process. Okay. Right. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. That make a lot of sense. Yeah. And a lot of people, again, don't know that something happened. They're like, well, I don't know what policy they have. So it would be is if I'm the person who holds the policy, I will have to let you know, hey, Keisha, here's my legacy card. Anything ever happened to me, you know the number to call to make sure everything is everything. But my family okay. is situated. Exactly. That makes sense. Gotcha. Gotcha. And, and let me ask um, you this: Should you get multiple copies of your insurance, or can can somebody find it anywhere online? So, say if I I just got the policy, um, use me again as the example in the guinea pig. Not necessarily saying that this is my plan, <laughs> mm -hmm. but right. if say I, I put you down as a beneficiary, you know how some people is. Well, I'm gonna put all this information in my safe. My sister got this going, so it'd be for my nephew Nehemiah, but I never tell you about that. Right. Is there any type of site out there? And then we may be coming up with a, a idea. I know you always be making money. Maybe you'll come up with this app and tell the insurance and just say, hey, we need this because we don't have it. So I'm asking you this. Is is there like any type of online thing where you you hear that the family member to pass away? I just put a million dollar policy on myself because I want to make sure my little nephew is taken care of. Like right now with you and we didn't get a chance to go over this, but I'm trying to give me about three or four policies set up for myself. Because I believe okay. in legacy building. But I done set the million dollar policy up. I done passed away. And you don't even know I got one from my little nephew. Is there but, a site anywhere where you can check in and say, hey, let me see that my, my brother have a, a policy out there? Or is it right. just like, okay, you don't hear about it, well, you don't know about it? Well, as a beneficiary, with that beneficiary, you have to have their social security number, okay. right? Their name. Mm. That all goes on the policy. How right. you delegate your money to be broken down. So, so for instance, they can't find uh, nobody know you got this policy, but that right. insurance company pull that person's um, social. Me and my husband put in that social security. Guess who gonna pop up? Me. That beneficiary. Guess who they gonna oh. contact? That beneficiary. Oh, right. Gotcha. Now it okay. can be a streamlined process. I understand what you're saying because that can be right. kind of difficult to understand. Like I just want to well, streamline. Don't even process. know. Not even. I didn't. I didn't even know that existed. Let alone difficult right. to understand. They don't even but know. And the person wouldn't even know you had it, but the person who the beneficiary would, because that's okay. who they're gonna contact. Right. That's who right. they're gonna search for. Oh, you. So you hold on. Now I, 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 I'm just not hearing you. That. The insurance policy, they they hear that I had died. So is, there's a notification when I pass away to the insurance company. Right. So yeah, you okay. have so they probably would get notified by what? Me not sending that payment in every month. Like, okay, ho, we're uh, not getting this no payment. payment or or death certificate. Right. Death certificate that they receive from your behalf. Or that okay. person who your beneficiary, right? If you got if you love money to somebody. Right. And like you say, Nehemiah don't know you passed away. 
and mm -hmm. you got that money just stored there. The insurance company has to reach out and contact somebody because that death policy is going to be sitting there. So usually when you have a beneficiary, you have to let them know you have been or you have an emergency contact as well. Something happened to you. Who is your emergency right. contact? So that's another way a person going to find out is because uh, Mr. Hudson ain't been paying his policy. We got to skip trace and find out who he is. Um, and also, okay. Um, most people are gonna tell people they got a policy. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Because again, usually when you leave leaving money to somebody, you have to be, you have to get that personal information. Right, right. So, like for say, if you did want to leave your nephew, uh, or if I want to leave my nieces and nephews money, I'm gonna have to call you and your wife and say, hey. Uh, I'm going to need their uh, date of birth and their social security numbers because I'm trying to lead them a okay. policy. So what's that going to trigger you into you? If something happens right. to my sister, gotcha. I'm going to keep sense. getting something. <laughs> right. Right. Now, let me, one, one last question because your time is, is to ran just yes, a sir. little bit over. Um, right, right. What, what happens if a beneficiary dies before or with you? How, how, does, how do those policies get, get linked? So you have so left the money to, to my nephew, but we having to be on a trip to Africa together, and both of us ain't here. What what, what happens with with that million dollar you policy now? Contingent beneficiaries, contingent on contingent. you and him dad at the same time. Mm -hmm. mm, so whoever okay. is the contingent yeah. beneficiaries will receive that money. Awesome, awesome. Well, boo, I know you got to go. I know you got um some more meetings that you had to get to. How can uh, teammates out here um, that listen to old school Sunday conversations uh, get in contact with you if they want to find out more about how they can always be making money, how they can be mm -hmm. building legacy by making sure that they have the right insurance policy and get everything that they need? And if they got more questions, like, why well, ain't asking this? I want to know this. <laughs> how can they get in contact with you? Uh, so they can contact me through my business line, which is uh, 248 270 9566. Um, and okay. that's through SCS. The you second way, SCS, S like Sam, E like Edward, S like Sam, SCS. Okay. That's my business line. Also, you can contact, I can be contacted on Facebook as well um, on my Facebook page, which is Final Expect Expense Options. Again, that's Final Expense Options. You can just type it in. It'll pull up my face. You can't miss it. And the other one, I have a page as well. It's called Always Always Be Making Money. Okay. You can put that in your Facebook search, and I'll pop up again as well for that. So, right. uh, yep. So just know final expense options. That's the life insurance. Always be making money. Or it's just tips and tools on how to continuously create income. And also, it's a leeway into um, youth financial literacy. Awesome. Awesome. Well, make sure you text me all that information you just shared so that I can link everybody in to the, the recording as well. Um, and on the Old School Sunday Conversations page. So that they, as they're watching this recording... Uh, they can go in and catch the link so they won't have to keep pushing replay to see if they got it right or not. It'll be right there in, in black and white form. Hey, I appreciate you blessing my first episode and looking forward to making some money with you and getting my policy together with you as well real soon, all right? Real soon. I can't wait. All right. Beautiful. All right, you God have bless a blessed you. Thank and you. And you heal up fast now. Huh? I said you have a blessed one and you heal up fast now. Yeah, God is with me, and he's a healer, amen. so I'm not worried about it. <laughs> amen, amen. That's what's up. All right. All right. All right. Peace, Peace out. Love. You as well. Yeah. All right. Bye-bye. Who was calling me? Oh, oh my, my dear sister. Let me see, how do you stop your recording? I had to snip that.